We start this half hour with a closer look at the top political headlines this week. Joining us are Deputy Political Director Avery Harper and ABC White House Correspondent Mary Alice Parks. Ladies, welcome. Thank you for being here. Mary Alice, we saw a huge shift in rhetoric this week in terms of Biden's response to Netanyahu. But do you really see a change in policy coming? What are his options to actually move the needle? And how does this help him with the campaign? Because many argue that he looks weak against Netanyahu. I mean, you're right that this was a big uh, rhetoric shift. The question is, does he put any policy changes behind it? And and look, there are points of leverage, huge points of leverage. The U.S. is Israel's biggest weapons supplier. We give more military and foreign aid to Israel than any other country. At any given time, we're talking about hundreds of contracts. On a standard year, we're talking about over $3 billion in military weapons uh, sort of transfers to Israel. So there are all of these points where the president could slow roll, could cut weapons that would um, make a huge difference. I mean, it would send an unbelievable message. Now, that would be a huge fundamental shift in U.S. policy towards Israel. Some Democrats are absolutely pushing for that. This week we saw 40 House Democrats, including former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, say that that's what they want. They want an end to weapons transfers to Israel right now, especially given what happened this last week with those aid workers killed. Uh, the U.N. top human rights activists said that all countries should stop weapons transfers to Israel. But look, there are plenty of others on Capitol Hill that don't want any change in policy. Some people who say Israel has enough bombs right now to do whatever they want. Why would we leave them more vulnerable? So this is exactly the big question. Will the president change any policy? What message was that send? Right now, they're mostly focused on just seeing if Israel does, in fact, open up any more of those border crossings to get aid in. And one thing is policy, the other politics, right? And Avery, the, the war between Israel and Hamas, that's having a real impact on the ballot box and how people are voting. Right. We've seen Democrats in primaries across the country uh, use their ballots to send a message to President Biden. Uh, a lot of these folks are casting protest ballots uh, to call for a lasting ceasefire uh, in Gaza. And so we saw that in Wisconsin this week. Uh, nearly 50,000 voters uh, cast what are called uninstructed ballots, many of them in protest of Biden's handling of the uh, humanitarian crisis in Gaza. Uh, so that's a vulnerability for him in this really key battleground state. Also for Trump, we're seeing many Many Republican voters who are not voting for him in these primaries. Nearly 13 percent of voters in Wisconsin voted for Nikki Haley, and she's been out of the race uh, for many weeks now. And so uh, it, it could be a real huge impact in November what these voters do, because in a state like Wisconsin, the, the margin of victory can be very slim. And so, Mary Alice, let's talk more about these protest votes. Is it a sign that at least some voters are still searching for a third option? I think it could be. I mean, look, these are two incredibly unpopular candidates, relatively speaking, to, to previous elections. And we have seen signs that people are still looking for something else. This last week, though, if you were searching for something else, a big setback. That group No Labels, they had hoped to have a unity ticket, one Democrat and one Republican running together. They called it quits. They said they couldn't find a candidate. Uh, you know, there is, of course, that independent candidate, Robert uh, Kennedy Jr. Uh, I, Democrats seem worried. I, they're mostly worried still that people will just stay home, but they are taking the threat of RFK seriously. At least it looks like it. They're spending money to aggressively go after him, uh, to try to keep him off of ballots. We don't know if he'll really end up on ballots, but look, we have seen him polling sometimes near 10 percent. And, and real quick, Avery, I mean, when we talk about folks going out to the polls to make their voices heard, Florida Supreme Court decision to allow abortion on the ballot, we've seen how that's worked out for typically Republican states like Kansas. Right. Uh, so Democrats are hoping that this uh, gets voters to turn out in force for them. Uh, we saw the Biden campaign earlier this week saying they believe that the state of Florida could be winnable now because uh, the issue of abortion will help them connect with voters there. Uh, Republicans tell us in the state that they are not that worried. Only time will tell. Mm. All right. Well, ladies, thank you both so much for being here with us to talk this all through. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.